<laughs> We're rolling, Brenton. Alright, everyone, come on, stop. Let's stop. Alright, so hi, everyone. Thanks for coming for again. You know me, I'm Brenton, part of the X 2018 system of Foxlight. And this is our X 2018 added general meeting. This is kind of what we're going to go through. So. Then um, we have 10 constitutional amendments. I'll go through a bit about those when we get there. Yeah, and then after that, we have the elections for the positions. Anyway. Um, yeah, and then after that, there's just some general and unexpected business and anything. Alright, um, so apologies. So, Chris, our current computer systems officer, he's in the UK now and has been for a couple months, so he can't be here, of course. Um, Jenny, our current president, uh, she had some like unexpected overtime and work come up, like you know, an hour or two before the AGM, so she can't be here. Right, so now the 2017 AGM. I uh, will quickly go on the uh, minutes from the wiki and just kind of go through them a bit. Yeah, you want you might want to zoom out a bit. Zoom in. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah, you know, we did more. Um, Few of the previous exec, few of the current exec, and some old timers were there. The proxies were, you know, like um, Tom had Roman, Christian had Tom, and I had Alex. Um, we had we needed fourteen, as you know, to meet the quorum. Um, inclusive of proxies, we actually had fifteen inclusive of proxies reach the quorum. The agenda then was basically the same as what it is tonight, but we didn't have any constitution amendments. Uh, our vice president at the time, Jayesh was also overseas, I believe, so he couldn't come, and Alex had some other minutes that night, so he wasn't there. We did the same thing we're doing right now, we read those uh, minutes. And yeah, so the executive reports, they're all quite brief, because I, none of you were aware, um, in 2017, Coxlock was kind of like a little bit inactive, we didn't really run many events or anything, so the events conducted was nothing substantial. Um, it was difficult because a lot of the exec were working full time, and the vice president was overseas, and yeah, it was just a bit of a mess, to be honest. Um, Cody reckoned, um, yeah, as the exec, uh, as the year progressed, we started focusing more on, you know, making a plan for 2018 and trying to recruit a good team for this year. Um, Jacob, one of the previous execs, uh, previous presidents, asked Cody, like, what would you do if you could do it again? He basically said, that takes final quarter and actually make stuff happen. I was the treasurer last year, and basically we had no expenses because there were no events. Uh, we had about 50 financial members. Uh, the membership fee last year was $10, so we had roughly $500 income. There were no real expenses. Uh, that $500, we had it all in paid cash. Yeah, of course, question about that. Yeah, that all went into the bank account eventually. The AGM, we spent like, you know, 120 or 200 on pizza or something, so we made like $300 profit that year. Um, one of the other things I spoke about back then is that I wanted to, you know, get in contact with the people from the FLP, like Sheree, and get in contact with the other societies. And I didn't want to be too concerned about the lack of prompts not having a room. Because um, that's been a sore point in the past where um, a few years ago, before Building 11 was constructed, prompts not used to have a room. And a lot of our weekly meetings and events and stuff were held in that room. When we lost the room, it kind of, kind of made the society be inact inactive, like what do we do, no room, nowhere to put the server, and yeah, it caused a bit of a problem, including all the inactivity. Um, so computer systems officer Chris, the same as this year's one, he stopped being able to host the web server ourselves, because um, yeah, we used to have it co-located somewhere, we couldn't put it there anymore, so we had to start using DigitalOcean. We'll discuss this a bit more tonight, because we're in the same position actually, but he was paying that out of his own pocket, he was fairly expensive actually, $75 a month US. And a lot of that cost was due to people's home directories, they had a lot of files and stuff in there. Um, we were planning on either getting people to cut down those home directories or try to move the server on site. But then you know, all the different executive members stepped down, and then we had elections. Um, so there were only like five candidates for any position, so everyone kind of ran out of those. So I became the president, and as I said, I aimed on talking to you know the different fan societies and trying to become active on campus again and stop worrying about the room. Uh, the vice president was Jenny. 
Treasurer was Phil, and our Secretary is Alex, and CSO was Chris again. And of course, you know, with our bank account, we removed Cody and yeah, just Cody actually removed him off there and then added Seth there. Yeah, that was the agenda. Does anyone have any objections to that or anything we all accept the minutes? Yep. Alright, so make sure that's down, we accept the minutes. Yep. Um, all right, so now we're into the executive reports. So as I was kind of saying, like our aim this year was to try and provide ProxSoft with all we had a room. I think we've done some good progress towards this. So this year we had about 156 financial members. Um, from the recent records we've had, like from the last like five or so years, I think that's the most we've had. So that's quite good. I don't know about before that, but it's definitely a lot of members. So we're quite happy with that. Uh, we ran a few like quite large events, which I'll cover on the next slide, and smaller events and collaborations across the year. Um, we didn't really have a great relationship with Activate last year because of the activity, but we kind of re-established that relationship, make sure we're not in a bad place anymore. Um, we also re-established partnerships with our sponsors, in particular the WiseTech, and all the connections with the um, staff from the FLP, such as Shri, Jess, and uh, Yoli and all those kind of people who weren't really around a few years ago when Foxsoft was active. And finally, we collaborated with a few of the different pet societies, so Robotic Society, Pass, and Cyber Security. <laughs> yeah, so I think all of that, the success from this year, we've proven that you don't really need to have a room to have a successful Foxsoft. I mean, it's still be good to have one, but we don't need um, There's also possibilities next year of um, the old soldering room next to the FLP that might become a kind of collaborative project room where we can kind of collaborate with other societies and do stuff. But that was also the plan for this year, so we'll see what happens. Right, here's a list of the different events we ran. So very early in the year, we had a VR play day. We've got a tech blogger, Jeff Diamond, coming up. He showed us uh, HTC Vive. We played around with some games, had some geeks from drinks. Pretty fun, right? Uh, we resumed weekly meetups. Uh, in the autumn semester, they were just in the FLP. You know, we had a few people show up there, talk about their startup ideas or some coding problems. I mean, as a whole, they probably weren't too successful. Like, they're probably, you know, roughly like five people there in those weeks. Um, then, around the middle of the semester, in Stuback, we had the Code to Learn Hackathon, which was a collaboration with the Bot Society, and it was sponsored by um, WiseTech. That was a really large budget event. It ran over the whole weekend, and it was really good. Um, then we had some collaboration kind of Arduino workshops with the Robotic Society and Pass. Two of those were in the autumn semester, and one of those was in the spring semester. Um, then with Engineering Society, we had this kind of IBM startup talk. So what that was was um, IBM had like relationships with a bunch of different startups, and they use IBM technology, and they were trying to get people to do like internships where they start off and do like say three months at IBM and then take the skills they learn by IBM and apply that to the startups. And basically, IBM wanted to promote things, so we just kind of gave them some help in promoting the event and talking to them about that kind of internship idea and we had a talk at the software studio on I think Ben might be able to, yeah. Yeah. Um, Did people show up? I mean, <laughs> uh, few, a few people showed up, probably would have wanted more. We probably should have had a bit more time like when they, yeah. Because they, they, they sort of only told us this date of the event running Way too close for us to effectively promote it. You have less than a week to promote this. The upside of that event, though, was less in like having people come to it as much as just establishing those relations. So we yeah. still have contact with those, uh, those you yeah, know, like startups, yeah. startups yeah. Yes. and they've been talking about potentially doing some more stuff in the future. So maybe next year we can uh, do a bigger version of that with some sure. more planning. Yeah, awesome. Right, so then, um, that was the start from the autumn semester, then in the spring semester, um, towards the start, there was a Fair Society Games Day. Uh, not all of the different Fair Societies, but a lot of the different Fair Societies collaborated, and in the, uh, I don't know what you call it, but whatever that area is, when you walk in the building, like... Yeah, the yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that's it. Thank you for leaving us out of that, by the way. Oh, that's not my choice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was a choice, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so you know you're being unbound. Um, and you know, you do like our borders, and under, I think they do like, um... They're social entrepreneurship. Oh, yeah. right. Okay. Very similar. That's yeah. the yeah. faculty. Okay. So yeah, they were all kind of just, we had like game consoles and board games and stuff set up on a, uh, I think it was Wednesday or something, evening and afternoon. People just kind of went and played games, talked to the other members of the societies. It's a good kind of chance to see who was a member of other societies, what kind of societies were around and what people were doing. So it's more of a social kind of thing. 
Um, then, due to the kind of mediocre success of those weekly meetups, we started collaborating with um, the Cyber Security Society, and we ran what we called the Hack Code Learn Collab Weekly Meetup. So what that was is our cyber security had a, like uh, booked a room on like level seven. People would come there to learn about cyber security stuff, play around with some cash the flag kind of stuff. And we would also run our meetings there. People came there wanting to learn about coding or do competitive programming. They could also go there and we'd try and do it in the same room and kind of foster kind of collaboration and stuff. And what those ended up being is we had a lot of practicing for our programming competition. So that was our big event in um, spring. So that was ICPC style a programming event, also running StudentAct, also very successful. We had a similar amount of people there that we had a pack on. I think it was about 60 people there. Just like a record for the programming competition, I believe. Yeah. And we recruited a few teams from that, like they were in the kind of top 10 there. We got them to start training for the ICPC. And we sent four teams to the um, ICPC divisionals last weekend. Last weekend, yeah. Last weekend. Yeah, and uh, one of the teams actually qualified for divisionals. Oh, uh, regionals, sorry, regionals. Which means they're in the, um, there were I think 69 teams from Australia, New Zealand, and Fiji competing in the divisionals, and to get to regionals, you need to be in the top 12. That was 10. So, yeah, they came 10, which was like really impressive. Um, then, so that means like, I think mid November, they're actually going to be competing for a spot in the World Finals amongst those 12. So, it's quite exciting. Yeah, in April. Yeah, which, and the World Finals in Brazil in April. That's yeah, weird. That's nice. <laughs> Yes, that's that. Um, now, also, let's uh, talk about Trinity. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, yeah, so um, quickly just going over this. So, a big part of our um, funding for this was by tech level. Um, so, one thing for next year, we'll have to think about is getting some sort of sponsorship for them when we continue. Because um, a lot of our successful events, such as the hackathon and the programming competition, came down to funding from um, I say global. Um, so I think, I believe we got about 25 Yeah, 25 um, And then we got about $900 in science this year, which was really, really significant. Um, and then a bit of it was from Fade and Activate. Yeah. Um, so next year, I think one of the, just quickly going over this, one of the good things that we can look for next year is Activate didn't really believe too much in Frogsoft this year. I think based on the like, um, reputation that was built up from previous two years. Um, and so trying to get funding for what we were doing was a little bit challenging. Um, so again, we went down by sec. Um, so yeah, we started off with four points grand, um, and then we got about 26 grand, 27 grand, um, and then spent 20, um, and ending up with 7.6. So a lot of our events, I think, Personally, I think we spent a lot of money on the hackathon, a lot of, and we spent kind of an outrageous amount on the prize pool for that. Um, I'm trying to remember, what was it? Eight grand, eight grand. Yeah. Um, so about sixty people contesting. We, yeah, but we we did get a lot of positive feedback from that one. I and I don't think a lot of the positive feedback was based on the prize pool. I think it was just on the event itself, like yeah. the end of July, and we had big increases. Stuff. You're just copying 24 minutes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so if when like hopefully we continue doing something similar to this next year and we definitely I don't want to say definitely because based on how many people we get for the um, like participants for the following year, but we should try and we can save some money from the price pool because like it's it's good for some people but I don't think it's too much of an impact overall. Um, and I still think running events like this, we can spend very little money to still run events like Hackathon and um, such, and still get a very positive um, or like a good number of people to join because this is what people want to do. They just want to get up and get up and develop new things. Um, so I don't know if there's anything specific I need to cover. Like, what months the second point? So um, at the moment, the way Popsum's bank account works is. From a few years ago, we have like a St. George account. I think that's how Activate or the Union used to work a long time ago. And they started to shift for a few years ago, they shifted to Commonwealth Bank, and like no one ever made a box of Commonwealth Bank account. But this year we did. So at the moment, we have the two accounts. We have the St. George one, and we have the Commonwealth one. The St. George one, I don't think it requires signatories and stuff, so it's a bit dodgy. It's because like one person, like just the president, can do a transfer. 
Whereas with the Commonwealth Bank one, you actually need to sit down. You need to have the president and the treasurer both sign off on each transaction, which is really good for you know, the security of your money. So um, one thing that we'd like to do as part of this year's um, handover is move all that money across, like the, I guess the 4.6K, move that money across from St George into the Commonwealth Bank, shut down that St George account and only have the Commonwealth Bank account. And the Commonwealth Bank account has, I guess, the three signature things, so activate, hand over, rule you. But I think the only like, time they do that is if you, you know, got disaffiliated or wrap up or something. Yeah, we don't think it's a major problem or anything. Unless anyone has like major objections to that or wants to discuss it. Well, that's what we're supposed to be doing, so... Yeah. So does anyone have any objections? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a good thing. It's like, you don't have one person, like the president, or even the treasurer, because we both had logins. Either of us could have transferred all the money out and done anything. I mean, it's a lot of effort. If the next year's exec have to deal with two accounts as well, you need two sets of logins. When you hand over the bank, like bank details, you need to both like go to both banks and get them to sign everything over. They both need to look through the AGM minutes and yeah. kind of do everything it's okay. Yeah. So it's so much easier having one account and everything. Yeah. So besides yeah. just transferring money, what else needs to be done for us to manage our I think once we transfer the money, we need to go in and officially close the uh, bank account. So I think as part of that, it's similar to handing over the account where we need to come in with our AGM minutes and the minutes would need to explicitly say that we agreed to wind down this St. George account, shut it down. Okay, so that's the only reason why it hasn't been done earlier, just because you need like, I believe so, yeah. society, right? Mm. Yeah, I think mm. that's about it, Lord um, So next, I think we had CSO. So as I said, Chris is actually overseas at the moment, so I'm going to do his report for him. So our server is still being hosted on DigitalOcean and we need a permanent solution. So the most expensive part of DigitalOcean, which is 75 US dollars a month, is that we require 300 gigabytes of block storage, which is due to our bank directories. People have some big files on there. And the thing is, um, this might be news to a lot of like our current members, but like you know, back in the day, Proxlog had like the server, and when you became a member, you would get a login to the server, and you could you know play around on the server, put your files on there, post your website on there. But it's just, it doesn't really make sense these days because you can really easily get free web hosting. You can buy a you know, $5 droplet on DigitalOcean and get $100 free student credit. So I mean, the way that you, this server doesn't really fit in with the current kind of, I don't know, offerings around where you can easily get your own server. So of course, that, I think in the last five years, like, we probably haven't even been making accounts because no one's had a demand for it. But the existing accounts from like previous members are still there and they're still using the storage and they want their websites up and we still do run, for example, our wiki on there and we've got our like our dog judge for the guided programming on there, so we still have a need for a server. It's just uh, the you, accounts not so much. Would you now migrate the storage to somewhere like if, if if the storage is not actually being actively used, migrate it to somewhere that's really called cool storage and then you can scale it? Probably not. So a few years ago, there was a proposal to get rid of the storage, I believe, or something along those lines. And a lot of uh, the old timers um, kind of had, like you know were objected to that, understandably, because there's a lot of you know history on there, basically. Like you know, you guys know GSC is right? That really old like Yahoo yeah, website thing. A lot of stuff on Proxy is like GSC, and when like GSC is went down, you lost so much stuff and like a large part of the history of the internet. I think pro like the Proxy members' web pages are a lot like that. They're part of this like history of the society. So I think the web pages and stuff should definitely stay, but if people are using a large amount of storage for like videos or something, maybe we can have a frank discussion with them, be like, we're spending this much on storage and you maybe like move it to Google Drive. So was was the condition that basically if you became a member, you're allowed to use this thing and it's there forever? Like there was no anti state clause to that? Uh. Stuff can't be it's like something without that. The situation is kind of that service is never guaranteed. No service at all ever is guaranteed to members. Exactly. But a lot of the old people still remember we had a room, we had a lot of treasures in that room. I was giving away a photo of this junk, and they're all basically gone. There is some digital treasure remaining from the society that's decades old. And it would be a great shame to lose that, especially since it's very important and we don't have to lose it. So it's not a question of we can't get rid of it. Chris could decide that it's just gone and 
but it would be great to distinguish between what is public facing and publicly visible heritage in the society versus what was convenient storage for a compressor in the next 15 years ago, and then the numbers moved on. So if we could distinguish from one to the other, we would probably keep a bunch of history, which is actually not very small, and then you have the CK's video collection is 298 gigs. Oh, oh. now we have 300 gigs of storage. So. <laughs> 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 I should change CK. CK, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's just CGM. That, that, that could probably be CK. Like, did you take it down? Yeah. Did you figure out what's publicly yeah. visible and what is not? And stuff that's not publicly visible is first against yeah. what we could be rid Yeah, so that's something on the agenda of whoever takes over as CSO. Unfortunately, Chris is so like he's working full time. He you know migrated over this year. He just hasn't had the time to do that. Yeah, I think it was. I think CK did take his video down. I think, I think it's a man who's still taking his know. stuff down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we told him to take his stuff down, but instead he uh, stuffed around with uh, Buntu. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he broke our server. He broke our server. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, let's keep going. Um, so the plan was to move this into the. I think it's just called Egg now. It used to be Electronic Games Guild or something, but yeah, it's just Egg, I believe. Just Egg. They have a server app in the Harry Potter. And we discussed with them like putting our physical server, which we have, that's not plugged in, into that rack. And then we don't need to pay DigitalOcean because we have a server. But the kind of fans still through because the first problem was I believe that rack, like they're only using it for like, you know, LAN parties and stuff. They didn't actually have any like web hosting or anything. So I don't think their IP address is assigned to anything in that rack. So we would have needed to get, you know, the uni to assign some IP address. And, uh, Wait, Who knows what okay, else? but don't we have reserved for us uh, one three eight two five six and one three eight two five seven? I don't know. It's a question for for, for. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, potentially. Why don't we talk about the address and allocate the problem? Cool. So maybe that's a possibility. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the other thing was um, this discussion's kind of fell through. So we were talking with them, and they were keen on us to move the stuff there. Like, oh, it's fine. We just have to move some literal junk outside it, like out of the server rack. But it just never happened. Uh, they, had, I believe, they may have had issues among their exec, and yeah. who knows what happened. But yeah, nothing came of that, unfortunately. And what made it a lot more difficult was just the fact that a lot of our exec members this year were working full time. So it's hard, like, egg of there during the day, and like our CSO is working full time and can't go there and actually physically move the server. It's a bit hard. Um, so Chris was previously storing the physical server, like just storing it, not plugged in, like at his house or something. It's now being moved into the storage room of the FLP, alongside what remains of our stuff from the room, which I believe is just an Amiga yeah. and a bunch of games. Yeah. It's like I chucked all this other stuff out, but not the Amiga stuff. Yeah. Um, one other thing I forgot to put on the doc box here. Um, <laughs> Um, there's a star called an uh, ex-UTS called, I'm sorry, a uh, UTS-based star called Orion VM who offer like, you know, cloud storage and stuff. We were briefly talking with them about potential sponsorship arrangement where maybe they could give us like cloud servers and block storage and we can run some events for them and stuff like that. Perfect. Um, yeah, so a few weeks ago we had a discussion with them and I haven't heard back from them yet, so we could chase them up on that. I mean, we have to make sure that it's a sponsorship operation that works for both parties. And we don't want to become like some societies where they, you know, they, you look at their banner and they have like, you know, like 50 different sponsors and every week they're running a different event for a different sponsor. We want to start a society of equal students, so we have to be mindful of that kind of stuff. All right, so there were no questions about the server. And any questions I have to show Anything to add or any questions about the server? Yep. Um, just something to add about the IP address. Do you guys just need to be able to access the server hardware from from just outside UTS? And that's yeah, the just like web, there's no web hosting anything like that? Well, on the server. Um, what do you mean by web hosting? So like a hosting website, so you won't need an actual um, dynamic access. Well, the thing runs like Apache, so... Because you can, access the, you can access any server or anything like that that's connected to Ethernet from using the UTS VPN. Yes. Yeah. Well, but can like a uh, you know someone start a current student log into the UTS VPN? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. It needs to be like publicly facing. Yeah. All right. So yeah, we'll move on to um, the other executive reports. There's probably not much to add here. Um, Jenny, our vice president, she had nothing to add to what we've already said. Yep. Yeah. Um, Secretary, do you have anything to add? 
So nothing's happened. Neither turns it not. That's easy. <laughs> Alright, so now we get on to the voting parts. Um, first of all, proxies are uh, Vice President Jenny. She has nominated Tom to be her proxy. Um, that's just uh, what they call an unconditional proxy. You can use yeah. her vote for whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. Um, Alright, so constitutional amendments. So we have 10 to do tonight. So I'll have to specify that constitutional amendments are not routine. Amendments are generally rare. Uh, in the history, like the almost 30 year history of the society, the constitution has been amended six times, and unfortunately, three of those have been in like the last decade. <laughs> so, yeah, some of these amendments are minor, some of them are a little bit more significant. Um, I'll go through them all one by one. Uh, if you want to, we have a URL down there. If you go to that URL, you'll be able to see a PDF which goes through them in detail. It has like, you know, a before and after of the constitution. It might just help as you're going through these. Um, so after they have approved all these amendments, they've gone through them. They actually suggested a few of these themselves, or highly recommended that we do pass a few of them. So now our primary focus on making these amendments is we're primarily removing some bureaucracy and redundancy. Um, we hope that these amendments will remove the need for future changes to the constitution. So we shouldn't be changing it over here. Alright, so let's get on to the first one. So the first one is some definitions. So to those who don't know, uh, Activate is the union. Uh, they used to be called... Um, yeah, Activate used to be called the UTS Union. Um, they changed their official name, like legal name, to the Activate UTS now. Uh, so we just wanted to change the definition. Where it currently says union is UTS Union, we wanted to change it to the union, Activate UTS, and all we know is UTS Union. Um, this mentions to union throughout the constitution, but we don't need to go and change all of those because we've done these definitions at the time. Yeah, program not right. <laughs> um, the other one is uh, it's a less commonly known change, but UTS changed their name in like 2015. It used to be a comma. It's like University of Technology comma, Sydney. They got rid of the comma. Like around the same time that Western Sydney Union changed their name. Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of bizarre. So we thought, while we're changing this thing, why not fix that up as well? Because it's like right What a shame. So yeah, we kind of have a lengthy kind of reason for the proposal, but yeah, this is a really minor one. Um, I believe um, you reckon that we need 10 people to vote for each amendment. No, no, please, please recount the list. Yeah. I don't know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, so how many people are financial? I don't know. Um, no, no, just go. <laughs> Okay, so we need 11 votes to pass an amendment. So, does anyone have anything to add to this amendment or want to discuss it? <laughs> All right, let's vote then now. Um, raise, raise your hands. Yeah, guess. raise your hands for yes, I guess. Mm. <laughs> oh, actually, what we should uh, say is, like, if you're not a financial member, you should probably abstain from voting so we don't get confused when counting. Yeah. So, who are the non-financial members? Can you put your hand up now, just so we know? I'm not sure. <laughs> not sure. <laughs> yeah. Do you want me to check right now? <laughs> Before we continue. I have it open, I think, so... Well, let me take it they look pretty yeah, Alumni votes count as five. Sorry? Alumni votes count as five? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <Cool. laughs> <laughs> plus, plus Jenny. So you can sign up for 25 bucks. That's a hard sell on I can sell Yeah, I haven't re downloaded the Excel file. Yeah. Um, I, I haven't re downloaded the Excel file. So maybe we need to read that. I think it's still the 11, right? That's right. If we have one more to it. Yeah. Oh, is that bad? Just 
Reset on the 1st of February of each year with a one month grace period to cover the annual subscriptions. And we just want to replace this with annual subscription is dated for the calendar year, expiring on the 31st of December. So, there are a few reasons we want to do this. Uh, the first is uh, remove some ambiguity regarding like the, the grace period. It's just like, is the grace period the reason why it's February rather than January, or is the grace period in addition to that? It's a little bit ambiguous. Um, yeah. Then there's also some redundancy because there's uh, actually a like, covering of the grace period stuff in and on clause, I believe. Yeah. And we also want to standardize with the other societies. And basically, the most important one is uh, it's, this is actually not really complying with Activate UTS requirements because um, Activate UTS specified that one, like that it's uh, the calendar year after 31st of December. And since memberships have now shifted online, we actually can't control this at all because Activate are the one taking the registrations and saying if you're a member or not. So we're just moving towards what they're doing, what all the other societies are doing. Is so there anything to discuss on this one? So does that mean that um, the people who are voting in this membership expires at the end of the year and the event is actually doing it? Right? Wait, let's talk about the exec. Well, if you're yeah. going to vote in the exec now, yeah. and then the exec's membership will expire in December, Yes. And then they'll have to join up. Yeah, that's just how it works. You have a month to do that. Yeah, yeah that's how it works. It's not ideal. Technically, you still can be like do executive stuff without being a member, but you're supposed to be. You can't actually do anything event wise. Yeah. But you, <laughs> as in like, you can't say you're hosting an event or submit a form, but you yeah. still can host meetings and stuff without being yeah. a member. So, yeah. it's, you, it usually, it's usually fine, and nobody really cares enough to. Yeah. I mean, I think generally being an executive member overrides whether you're a financial member of the society, except when we get to, like, you know, into pedantics, like, you know, at the age, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Can you have a multi-year membership? No. Unfortunately, well, unless they extend the website, no. Okay, so the website has It's, it's really the website. <laughs> we've been in discussions with Activate about it. It's a, it's a thing. We've been trying to do, like, a full engineering degree thing, so if you sign up first year, you have it for five years, but it's not past three yet. Okay. Cool. Yeah, the website's like a beta, so they'll add stuff to it. Yeah. Okay, I'm just raising things yeah. that I've been thinking about. Yeah. Like the amendments that are coming up. Maybe so, noting down these yeah. concerns. Cool. Yeah. Okay. okay, so if there's nothing else to add, I guess we'll vote on this one. Um, yeah, raise your hands for yes for this one. Thirteen this time. Yep. Cool. Pass this through. All right, third one. Um, oh, this one's like really redundant. So basically, uh, if you make a change to what happened was in 2015, our AGMs used to be in about March, like at the start of the year. They decided to move them to like October to standardize with the rest of the societies. And so yeah, everyone does it at the end of the year generally. But when they did that, they had to actually put in all these interim clauses into the you know, constitution to allow what they've done, which is really confusing. And one of those is this, which says like, Exemption from this clause is the 2015 year, blah, blah, blah. 
And you know, that's just like three years ago. There's no need for this to be there forever. So while we're making amendments, we thought we'd cut out the redundant 2015 part. Yeah. So anyone have anything to discuss for this one? Anything to add? All right, so yeah, raise your hands for yours. <laughs> Okay. Okay, exec voting. This one's a bit more debate to it, I guess. So at the moment, um, that doesn't make more sense just that here, but it basically says that if you have a vote among the exec, uh, and you can't get a majority vote, or like it's like a hung vote. You, um, you kind of beyond the president to decide which way it goes. Um, we just wanted to say that, yeah, we just want to get rid of that bit. Because um, there's a few reasons for doing this. One is that we actually have five executive members. So, assuming all members have been, you know, asked to vote on this, you can't actually have a hung vote. As someone decides to have so. Yeah. Should we go to an old vote? Or the normal vote. Right? Yeah. Well, I think if you have a odd number, of, maybe you have an even number of people. Mm -hmm. So my personal opinion is that if you have someone not there for the meeting and it's a hung vote, you probably should, you know, ask the person that wasn't there to kind of settle it. I don't think you need to make that decision. Then. And what if the what if yeah. somebody abstains? Someone abstains, then you can have the hung vote. Yes. And I think the thing ultimately that we're going for with this uh, amendment is. Does the constitution really have to define how we deal with this kind of stuff? Shouldn't the executive at the time decide how you break these? But if they can't vote about how about whatever they're voting about, how can they vote about how they're going to vote? Okay. Yeah. So this is why you yeah. do need it. Okay. And there's another thing that was saying similar things about no, maybe. I think this is the only one. I guess, okay. uh, what's the downside to keeping this in if it's like a formalised rule compared to not having a formalised rule? Even if it is redundant, is there a case where this would be a bad thing to have in the constitution? Well, no, no, but in my experience, like from like this year's exec and last year's, if we count that, was, um, generally with all decisions that were being made, we would kind of get consensus. So you discuss things, we wouldn't just say we want to do this type of vote. We'd like take people's opinions and try and come up with something the whole executive agreed on. I think it's important to do that personally because if you, you know half the society aren't keen on doing a certain thing, you're not gonna have their involved or like they might not be enthusiastic about their involvement in it. So that's just personal opinion. I don't personally don't think there's necessarily a downside of keeping it there. But that's the optimal yes, the option. Yeah. Um, yeah. Optimistic yeah. view of voting. Yes. Um, you've got to take into account that not everything will be. Mm. Even if a situation like this never arises, it's a good idea to have it. Mm. So, anything else to add? I'm sure we vote on some. Um, people have left the room. Yeah, I know. But, um, uh, just, what does that mean then? <laughs> well, it's going to be a lot harder to pass amendments, right? Well, I know. It's just like, how long are they going to be on for that? Yeah. Where are they picking up pizza? I think. I assume the entrance. Oh, okay. From the delivery. I thought they were going to Okay. Yeah. 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 Y
Because yeah, they're not in the constitution as an executive, like activating them, consider them. So they're more, they're more general committee. You consider them. Yes, yeah, so LDS officers is what a lot of other societies call general committee. It's the same thing. Yes, all right. General yeah. committee. I mean, you don't have to, like, functionally, they can still be the same as an exec. They can still do the same things. Mm -hmm. They can exactly. still be as instrumental to the success of the society. It's really just, you know, what the constitution says. Um, so while we wait for the, like, we'll defer voting until they come back, but do we want to go through some of the other amendments until they're back to speed up the process? Yeah. Or it wouldn't be fair for them either. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. a good point. Like, I don't know what things have changed, but I watched the club for at least a decade, including some time on the exam, and we never voted on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know, right? That's the thing, like, that's why it's a bit strange, because I've never seen a vote in. It's been struck. I've got to get that down. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Right. This is a bit of a relic from like when the student union thought that there was going to be official voting and official meetings that happened every two weeks or every week. Yeah. We never do this. Yeah, what is it? An ordinary general meeting, you know. Oh, so it's like an SGM, it's not special. No, it's just ordinary. We're actually supposed to vote at the AGM when we're going to schedule them, you know. But we've never done that ever. What do you what do you do? Yeah. Um CTA is a strong opinion. Um should we read it out? Yeah, yeah. Do you want to read it out? If I can find it. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't like most of these. Some of them you liked less than the others, and this is the like a bigger purpose or bigger change behind this. And he's particularly put out by the reason given for point four. I might be wrong, but does it fail to foresee the possibility of an absent member or a vacant position? That sort of thing, yeah. That's basically what he said. Yeah. It's a weird edge case that will basically never come up, but we might as well have that edge case there, you know, for Q1 first. Yeah, no worries. Do you remember the exact context behind the new legal statement? What was the bit before the common um, Can you click back to the constitution? Uh, yeah. It's yeah. just something like you can help make a decision for the It's basically voting on significant decisions for the society. That's it. To a majority. To you. Do you have an extra one that you want? No. So the implication was if it was a hung vote, it would go to the yeah. majority. I think quite the same event. So I was all being very happy. What we've been doing. The instantly of this pressure. So it doesn't actually handle it in the first place. Just simply by not seeing. Unless there's another point, it doesn't handle the hunger at all. Which is probably not. Basically, in the case of a hunger outside, the president shall have a deciding rule. Oh, sorry. Okay. But is that the event? No, it's not. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just to remove that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we'll just simply read, vote on significant decisions regarding the society and its interests. Full yeah. stop. Okay. I don't see anything wrong with it being in there. Eh. I'm going to vote anyway. Yeah. It's useless. No, no, no. I voted exactly the same thing last year. Really doesn't matter. How many no's are we going to have, by the way? Because we might actually get a point where there's so many no's that we can't pass it. So who is planning on voting now? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, I guess, but... Uh, what yeah, this one was in that position. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a <laughs> oh, sorry about this. <laughs> it, it matters so little either way, you might as well say yes. Um the main arguments I like against doing this one is that it might still be useful in some scenarios. Yeah. Because you could can still have a hung vote. And the other argument like against removing it is what's the cost in leaving it there? Like what do we lose from not having it? Yeah. I don't think it's a loss either. Very unlikely. Just ignore it anyway. 
any more people coming back? No, we have to sign out for Super Bowl if they're not coming back. Yeah. Are they? No, I guess it's not going to be. We want to start eating. Pass this vote, then we're going to eat, and then we'll rip. Alright. Why don't you just turn it Alright, so we still need 11 to pass. So, do we want to vote on this one? Yeah? Yep. Yes. Alright, so raise your hands for yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, please. <laughs> yeah, it looks like this one's not going to pass. Alright. Alright. How many was that? We can eat now. <laughs> <laughs> how many? Just for the record, how many was that? Oh, yes. Yeah, it was like five or something. Four and a half. Five, okay. I think it was five. six. All right, six. Six, yeah. So, no. Did you turn? Yeah, one side. Oh, right. Huh? Yeah. Right. We said you were going to be excited to like, wait, what's that? Oh, yeah, pizza. Sure. Oh. Oh. I think Georgia went to... Yeah, she's back in the meeting. Where's Georgia? Oh, we need all the pizza. That's enough pizza, right? Yeah, it's fine. 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 Should we start off the other two guys? Um, so I've heard you Oh, I think Tim's going to swap that out. Yeah, we know who they're going to swap out. And if they're going to swap out, they're going to swap out. Are you going to swap out? How many people are there? I think I can. Oh, it's Studio 2. Oh, no, sorry. Oh, Studio 2. Studio 1. Oh, it's Studio 1. Oh, it's Studio 1. Oh, it's Studio 2. 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 Oh, it's the new, yeah, the new race sets in the I think it's what people are practicing. And they just, we've got a chance to make it thing. So I really like it though, because it just feels like fun. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Right. So because of that, we're proposing we remove all of these really explicit you know, mentionings of key holder appointments and about the key holder role. So does anyone have anything to ask about or like mention for this? Yep. Uh, when we inevitably get access to the server stuff again, yeah. is that going to be something that like a key holder or a liaison would have access to? The, well, I don't think so, to be honest, because I mean, it depends where, like, if the server was in a room, then yeah, but I mean, if the server's in like a server room, then like, we share with other people, I don't think most executive members would even have access, so it'd probably just be the CSO that would have access. Right. And the so. same question for the locker, because I know lockers can get yeah. locks. We don't have a locker at the moment, actually. Okay. I mean, we could get one, because I mean, they're pretty easy to get out of the FLP, you just have to like, set it up with, you know, show you something, I'm guessing, but... Yeah. yeah, that's the same kind of thing where like executive members would have a key. If we have some liaison officers, some of those would probably have a key. It doesn't necessarily have to be a specific role. So anything else to add to this one? Anyone? All right, let's go. So put your hands up for yes for removing that part. Okay, yep, so that one's passed. Thanks. <clears throat> Point number six. Um, this one's pretty similar, actually. This one's about the room as well. Uh, it says all members holding keys, key holders, I guess, but it doesn't call them key holders, so it's still valid technically without the last name. Um, to the program society room, and any rooms leading to the same shall make all reasonable efforts to maintain the security of those rooms. So this one is like really specific, I think, to the layout of the old room. Yeah. So I don't know. But I can't remember exactly how it was, but I believe you had the room, and when you entered into the room. It was like a small part which was actually owned by TechSoft, who were BIG back in the day, something yeah. like that, right? Yeah, before that, ComSoft. Oh, okay. So we were in 10.380A and they were in 10.380. So you had to walk through another society's room to get to our room. So that's why yeah. this mentions things like, you know, like rooms leading to the same and all this kind of stuff. So we were proposing to replace this with just one a little bit more generic, I guess, saying all members holding access privileges to the society room shall make all reasonable efforts to maintain the security of the room. So we have no room, but. Hopefully in the future we might. Who knows? Yeah, it's just a bit more generic. Anyone have any objections or concerns with this one? Okay, let's go on it. Uh, same thing for hands up for yes. Cool. Secretary. All right, yeah, this one's true enough. This, this one's a small change to the secretary. So at the moment, the uh, constitution officially states that the secretary shall act as the vice president in their absence. So it's a bit weird. Like, why does the secretary? Yeah, it's just cool because you know, if you're going to be putting stuff on your resume, it's cool having it on this like official document where it's like being you know, certified by the actors. Yeah, and it's actually like the union. Yeah, that's something that's new for this year. Mm. It, it still is totally valid to put it on your resume without doing any yeah. stuff, so yeah, totally. it's nice to have it, basically. Yeah. I mean, like everyone's been doing it for like the last 30 or something years, yeah. probably, so... Yeah. Uh, it turns up in your academic transcript now, so that's the difference. Before, it, it, the only way you really said was word of mouth. Uh, yeah. Uh, here it's in your academic transcript, so when you graduate, yeah. it, it will say there that you have committed this many hours to what's it called, society. Yeah. That's the yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Which I know some people that do exec roles don't actually do it. Of course. Like, yeah, I'm the only person on our current exec this year that's doing the index program, by the way. That's because like, probably like, you know, two out of five of our current exec are actually alumni, but still the ones that are you know, current students, they're not doing it. So I think it's been hidden this like, in terms of engagement. But right, it's the first year it's running, so I think it's a good idea. That's the main part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So removing these specific kinds of liaison offices make it more difficult for someone to get the title that they wanted on a transcript? Uh, because these aren't the exact roles, they wouldn't be eligible. Yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't be eligible anyway, that's right. So the other alternative could be is actually codify the liaison roles into official roles and make them actual executives but make them executive roles that don't need to be filled, because not all executive roles need to be filled, but, yeah, but that leads to a whole other In order models. to be on the executive team, you still have to ha be, have it happen at an AGM, yeah. or an SGM. And you have to be elected. So if you haven't filled now yeah. at this meeting, you have to hold another one if 
someone comes up and says, hey, I think this role would be suited to me. And so the idea, so the idea for the liaison was always it's people, it's, it's people who just yeah. decide it would be a good yeah. idea for the time. Yeah. Okay, yeah. right. Yeah. Which is where like it would be equivalent to a general committee in that regard. Yeah. It's just people that want to put in a bit more. They have something they can put on their resume still, um, but it's not officially recognised by Activate essentially. I think it's not been good for like if you're a first year or something. Yeah, get yeah. It that's all. That's all we do. We have a lot yeah. of like first years who become execs later on. Yeah, yeah. start out as general committee. So we kind of yeah, lead into being in second. Is there anything more we want to discuss about this one or shall we go around? Alright, let's go around. Same thing, hands up for yes. Alright, auditing. So this one's kind of interesting one. I don't know if other societies have this problem, but our constitution actually is pretty explicit about annual statements and you know, balance sheets and accounts needing to be audited. But there's a bit of an ambiguity here because um, one thing, like, it doesn't explain what an audit is. Like, you actually need to go to like an auditor, like, you know, like, if you go to see the lawyer or something, get them to like go through your books and like have a formal kind of audit. Or can you just give it to like one of your mates or something and say, does this, like, do the books look legit? Like, it's very unclear. And um, it's actually kind of, redundant like, in a gay way, I guess, because like for the last few years, like as long as Tom can remember, for example, so what probably at least in the last five years? What, like past 10 years? In the last 10 years, no he doesn't know of a single time where this moment has taken place. So even though it's in the constitution, it's just not being followed. Um, one of the reasons for this is an audit actually does happen when we get reaffiliated. So as part of the reaffiliation process, we do need to prepare the books. Activate will go through that, make sure it balances out, make sure we've accounted for everything, and it's effectively an audit. So that reaffiliation process is the audit. So we're proposing that we actually cut this condition because of the reaffiliation process, meaning that the books are working. And also, we don't want to have things in the constitution that aren't being followed, because that kind of defeats the point of having a constitution and yeah, it kind of undermines everything else in there if there's something that's just never being followed. Um, Activate UTS have gone through, as I said, all these amendments. Um, this one they specifically recommended that we cut due to the reasons we've just mentioned. Yeah, but basically the reaffiliation process does what we intended for this. See, so this one's just a clear deleting of a few of the clauses. So does anyone have anything to add or mention for this one? Actually, the people involved in other societies, do you know if your society has something like this? No. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. It does? Yeah. Okay. I, Big still has something like this. Okay. I think do they follow it? No. Okay. I think similar to you, we had stuff like this that we ended up removing, okay. but we removed that, I think, the previous year, not this year. Okay. okay. So, so I'm guessing it's in the Activate template, or it was at some point. Mm. Mm. All right, so shall we vote on this one now? Mm. All right. Hands up for uh, removing it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Everyone. It's actually awesome. On to the final one. Yeah. So, what this one says is, uh, if we're writing an AGM or changing the constitution, it specifically states that we need to provide notice on the union notice board at Broadway to you know, either discuss the change. And um, I've put on my phone this, but yeah, because we're making so many amendments here, I had to actually put up four A4 sheets of paper with all the amendments on there and put it on the union notes board. It's ridiculous, I might not have even had space to put it there. And so they put it right at the bottom, and yeah. Then you guys actually see it. Yeah. So our current definition of the union notice board is um before the food court, yeah. it's a uh, like bad like, not bad, like a notice board where people put up all the you know events posters and stuff like that. So one of the interesting did you take a picture of it and post it to Facebook or something? Not like to that? Facebook, but I, I've sent it to like a few of the other examples. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a bit ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> I can share it on the group or something afterwards if we want. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so the reason we want to remove this one is we're not removing something that says we need to provide two weeks notice or notice to all members. That's still in there. You still need to give notice to all the members, but the medium for doing that depends on you know the time. So we you know did email this year. Um, you can't do Facebook activate one that you do that. But yeah, putting like you know the poster up on the notice board is not necessarily effective. And we want to kind of make the constitution kind of agnostic to the medium we're using to promote it. And another thing is, Activate UTS had actually strongly recommended we remove this. This wasn't in our original list of amendments, but what I did is when I sent through our amendments, I sent them a condensed down version, because originally we had a PDF that was 11 pages, 
And I sent them one that's like three or four pages, and I'm like, oh, I've condensed it because we need to put it on the notes. And then they're like, oh, you shouldn't have to do that. And that's why we're making this other amendment. Um, one of the reasons they're strongly against it is, um, I saw letting you know that they're building, um, you know, three, actually not what's the word, they're almost finished with building two, basically. And there's going to be another food court in there. So the current food court with all the activate outlets, that is probably getting moved in there, and they don't know the future of that kind of area. So when they do that, they don't even know if there will be a union notice board in a couple of years' time. So we may not be able to amend this in the future because of that. So um, yeah, does anyone have anything to add or discuss about this one? Yeah. Is there a virtual union notice board? I don't know. There's a Facebook group where you like present stuff, but I don't think there's really a virtual notice board in there. Which is quite interesting because I think a few years ago there was a proposal to actually mention some kind of virtual notice board in the constitution. Mm. I think, I think Blackboard was supposed to be that because technically clubs can mm. make certain sort of things today, but I don't think it's Well, I'm pretty sure I've heard Blackboard will be getting replaced by year. <laughs> so, oh, did you have that same discussion with the, uh, what are they called again? There was like people who came by for about a week. No, with them, um, no. like them, or something. Oh, yeah. Say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone's told me about it. Yeah. Yeah, they're getting rid of it. Does the union still publish anything monthly or have any things uh, advertising and any training or There's a few things. So they do often send out a, like, uh, you know, email like every couple of months or something saying what's coming up. The other thing is that faculty actually do this month as well. So the engineering and IT faculty will every few weeks or something send you a letter and we can get out of this point of that notice. And it's pretty easy to do it as well. I know the nurse boards are very old fashioned, so if there are some things that a, an organization is supposed to provide and adequate notice of constitutional changes is one of them. Yeah. Activate don't seem to be stepping on that board. I would expect if they're not providing a notice board, then they have some kind of monthly publication electronic or paper or both yeah. in which the back half would be all the actual business of running clubs, uh, even if the front half is kind of a lot of this. Well, I think that's one of the reasons they're you know, doing this website, because they do want to be able to control all this kind of stuff. I don't think they're at a point where they're doing these kind of mail outs yet, or letting us even do mail outs through that website, but it's probably going to come next. That's what I'm thinking. The faculty has that in most societies have a mail app themselves. Yeah. Like they have their own publication. Mm -hmm. okay. We have a mailing list. I mean, not that in this current, like, this current students are actually going to use the mailing list. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, so, yeah, shall, anything else to add or shall we go on this one? All right. Let's go. Right. So, same thing, hands up for you guys. Again. Yeah, so. All right, that's all the amendments. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So next thing is uh, exciting is elections. So who was planning on running for executive positions again? Cool. Oh. Yeah, one, two, three. Who's Confidence 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 all right. The goal so of the ballot is not to pause at this point and see what the results would be like and see if we can't organize them a little bit and then go to voting. What we can do that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, what positions are everyone interested in? I'll do anything. Uh, I can say yeah, vice president of CSO. Oh, I'm just I'm the same. I'm similar but with secretary as well. Okay. Anymore. Are you okay? I'm avoiding no. CSO. <laughs> is anybody got <laughs> anything but? Is anybody got it? Okay. Yeah, actually, is, is, anybody, is, is anybody interested in president? See, my opinion is that uh, I think president would be best for someone that has society experience, oh, ideally for right. self experience. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs>
guys. Yeah. But the oh, thing, no. like, I just want to put it out there. Yeah. Like, even as like, even though you have these titles and stuff, and yeah, there is that extra responsibility to the president. Like, everyone's still supporting everyone. Yeah. yeah so, exactly. like, I. So, with that being said, could you please be president? <laughs> <laughs> you get to delegate, all right? Yeah. Delegate. Speech, yeah. No, no, no. Anybody else? Well, like, I'm cool for it, right? but. Have to have some experience to be president. No, but it's the first. Yeah, alright. Do you want to be a Do you want to be a You can always do it if you have to. Like, I'm happy to. So let's just put people like, say, who wants to be president and then get a vote, and someone has to second it. Well, officially, you need to nominate. Someone needs to second it. You can still nominate. You can just do it now if you want. Someone can nominate someone, someone can second it. Oh, I nominate Sam. I nominate that. Whoa, this is great. We need to know down this Yeah, we all need to know down so we can talk around about it. That's the only format we get. I have an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you so don't so have to accept the nomination. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Still doing it. <laughs> so do you accept them? No. Okay. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so who nominates who? 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 Are you going to write this down? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Who nominated in second? Seb. I nominated Seb. And so we said. You get rejected. And you rejected. And you rejected. Yeah. got turned down and then Ryan nominated me and Jordan yeah. seconded me. Yeah. And you're so, Anyone else want to or thinking of running if they were to get nominated? I nominate Patrick. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I nominate Seb. Which, Which one? one? <laughs> <laughs> this set. Are you interested? This set? Or this set? This set. Do you accept the nomination? No, I don't want to write any skin on this. Of course, I was, I, was mostly joke, I was mostly joking about not me wanting to do this. I'm cool to do it if there's okay. somebody else. I just didn't want to feel like I was taking it from somebody else who well, has like, done more is stuff it, in society. Is anyone else interested in tree? Like, let's just make sure that no one's like having thoughts about it. Is anyone? Uh, well, I was actually on the fence, but seeing as if you were, you know, kind of on the on, on the fence, uh, I was more um, committed to such a such a role, and I would be willing to take a, like a time investment for this, if, if, if that's okay with everyone. Yeah. So sure. Like, uh, yeah. If, if everyone's like I'm on the fence, I'm willing to step up and uh, even though I don't have that much that experience as uh, something have affiliated you, you with uh, other societies. Have you been any, any executive before? Or? No, I haven't, but uh, I have a, I have a mentorship from a friend yeah, yeah. and, uh, <laughs> and Sebastian here. Yeah. <laughs> Secretary does have to do some stuff as well in terms of sending out notices and things, but yeah. yeah. And taking the minutes. Yeah. I thought we got rid of that notice board. Once you get in, you find the post boxes and the Yeah, we need to check out the post box. So don't go back to the experience. We need to go and run a carry to get all the room. President sends us in. Right. You want to do it? Okay, so who can be nominated? Is there a candidate? Yeah, I don't know. The second didn't accept it. So it says Patrick Ryan. Yeah, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. Ryan. Yeah. 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 I accept it. Yeah. It says Ben and Patrick Ryan. Yeah. And straight. You can self nominate. Oh, it's okay. No, I can do oh. vice president. Oh. Right. <laughs> I, yeah, I nominate. Yeah. I nominate you. I said, yeah. Oh, what? Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. Right, shall I come up and do speeches? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, yeah. 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 what about the other roles? No, you have to wait on this role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, tell us why. All right, you got you. All right, you got you. Okay, so you're the president, you're the first friend. This is confusing. Uh, it's like a whole thing, come on. Yeah. Why do you want to be? Why do you want to be? Come on, Rob. Why are you running this? Um, I don't know. Um, honestly, I just like to get in a deep end and see how far I can drown. I'm <laughs> 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 uh, just kidding. Yeah, can, um, we, can we deep end on you? <laughs> no, like, um, like, like I said earlier, I've had experience with uh, running meetups and stuff, and I think that I can run a society if I was given a chance to or help aid. Um, if I don't get the president role, I'm happy to do anything else and just put my hand up and everything. Um, it's my final year next year, and I want to make it the best this yeah. year. And um, I've been doing some some events with props of people, and I did hackathons before. I still do hackathons. And um, I'm part of a few like extra, how do you say, like co a girl meetup, and I'm part of that group as well. So it would be nice to bring Prop Stop's name out in the industry later. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'm Patrick, and um, basically I'm, I'm only really affiliated with uh, Prop Stop. And um, I, I see this society uh, as, you know, it has, has real potential. And just hearing stories from the, from the olden days, uh, especially story. And I just kind of want to revise it. Bring, bring some projects in, have some members to actually work on something and actually strive towards a, a, a goal. And uh, basically just diversify our activities instead of running the same old thing every single year because, uh, you know, uh, the university societies are always changing and we, we have to as well. Absolutely. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, you know what that says? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I've had previous experience with the Engineering Society and will also be an executive of the Engineering Society next year. And I feel like a lot of my, so I do software engineering, so and software engineering is like the most non-engineering engineering when it comes to a lot of the technical aspects. So Programming Society is sort of uh, lets me take my technical knowledge and like people that I know and networking and stuff and take them as probably a community of people that might be slightly more interested in that. So the main reason I thought it would be neat to join the society as well is firstly to collaborate with all the other societies and branch out a bit more and also to be able to, I guess, you know, take my knowledge or take the things that I can provide and help the society out as much as I could of any other society. Yeah. So, does anyone have any questions for her? Um, you said that you're like an exec in engineering society. How would you balance the commitment mm -hmm. between two societies as a president and another society? Uh, so, the main thing would be is uh, collaboration of events. So, I will obviously wouldn't say every single tech society event is also an engineering thing, and vice versa. You can't really do that, that doesn't really make much sense. Uh, so but what I would have is I would just like find opportunities where the, the two things and I also like bring in of course like robotic society, space society, cyber security, stuff like that is I feel like the more, uh, the wider a net you sort of cast with your audience I guess from the other societies and with the collaboration of like getting other people to organise in uh, would help the delegation process. That would be, and also I'm the only, I'm only the publications director of the engineering society, so I'm not. That's like I'm not like super high rank. I, I basically just like make the pretty pictures. Hopefully, that's, that's yeah. Yeah. so I'll make pretty pictures for this for this society as well. And you can see with the logo we put on. It's a nice logo. I was looking at that logo like it's really nice. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, that's about what I can do. You know, I've, I've used to Affinity Designer and the Adobe stuff before. <laughs> that's that's my jam. Yep. Is there any other questions? There was. Uh, yeah, I was, I was just going to say, because um, you said you were going to do um, or try and run the events that are different to what we were previously been doing. Did yeah. you have an idea of what you'd like to do? Yeah, so uh, like my kind of idea is to seek uh, additional sponsors. 
and hopefully uh, communicate with them and try to you know bring a, a, a fresh fresh set of um, Yeah, one question. Are you planning on doing internships or any major time things next year like that? Like, are you on a six-month internship or going overseas on exchange? Or anything like that? There is a chance in my second semester. It's far from locked in. Yeah. Uh, there is a potential chance. However, I want an internship. Or? An internship. Yeah. Okay. Not overseas, most likely, but there is a chance that. <laughs> again, it's, it's all up here. I don't plan things very far ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but. Yeah, that is a yeah. potential. But still, I wouldn't be doing like other subjects during that time, so I can still yeah you know, okay. be around. Yeah, so uh, I'll be doing my six-month internship uh, next semester. Uh, but in my case, um, that's not really a time sink. This actually frees up more time for me, <laughs> <laughs> and I actually have less time uh, in a in a normal semester when I do have subjects. Fair enough. Yeah. So I'll be freelance next year. So if no one has any other questions, we'll have the candidates go outside, I guess, and we'll either discuss more or do the voting. Yeah. Should we do that? Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Please leave room. Yeah. What method are we using to vote? I've never been on for like a real long before. Yeah. Can you start like a drum roll or something? I'm going to get the same two candidates and maybe some more for vice president. Yeah. Self nominate, I guess. <laughs> I second you. Second. Second. Yep. Anyone um, running against Ben for vice president? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Who seconds this time? So well, it's Ben, Patrick, and Ryan, right? Yeah. I second one. Right. Yeah. yeah, okay. Alright, so I guess um, Come Since forward. these two have already done speeches, do we just want the other speech then? Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. Right, right, come up. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Oh, <me. laughs> yeah. They can walk up too, but we don't have to do that. Woo! 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 <laughs> so, like, um, why you're interested in being an executive member of Proxstock, what your kind of extracurricular experiences are, your vision, yeah, vision for society. Why do you think you would be a good uh, <laughs> So, I, I have the same, I have the same <laughs> visions of society where I just hope that there's just more events going on. Um, I'm in my current third year. Uh, my degree, uh, software engineering, um, and I remember I joined the society in my first year, and there was pretty much nothing going on in the first year. Um, and honestly, like now that I've kind of gotten more experience through my degree, um, I'm currently doing my internship at IBM. Um, I just hope to just you know kind of accelerate, you know, help the president in terms of like getting more events up, collaborating with societies like the robotic society, um, you know, maybe getting access to like the 3D printing lab and that kind of stuff so that maybe we can do some more cool projects and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm not intending to do any um, internships internships and all that kind of stuff next year. Um, so just be really interested in the Cool. Cool. Right, so, shall we have the three candidates go outside? Yeah, two candidates. Oh, three. You guys get two lots of this. Sorry, three. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Yeah, we've got a big group photo at the 
again, we're going to get one of them to say, take it. Yes. <laughs> Super two again. Come on. I second that. I second the set. I second the set. Yeah, that's it. Is that anyone else running or is it two sets? Just two sets, come on. Um, Alright. Right. Who are curiosity? Who's going to see it? Actually, yeah, we'll cut that too. Um, CSO, by the way. Does anyone have server and hardware kind of experience? Yeah. Cool. Done. Also, any of them can Well, actually, both of us, and I think we're, we're wait, the wait, only wait, two wait, people wait. who are applying for that right. Right, right, right. Yes. Yes. That would be great. We used yes. to have a PFY. Yeah. Yeah. We can have that again. Yeah, let's go. Wait, so wait. Both of us. Oh, we discussed that when you're outside, but we said maybe we can have that. I have to find my application. Oh, no. Alright, GG, buddy, GG. Good follow. You're going to be the treasurer, is that it? What? Nobody else wants to be the treasurer. Yeah, you're going to have to be the treasurer. No, no, the secretary then. Secretary. Okay. Yeah, that was the secretary. Oh. Yeah, that's secretary. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that well, means that. If you're male yeah. treasurer, I'm male secretary. Oh. <laughs> However, <laughs> if nobody wants to be treasurer, then somebody needs to be because otherwise to, to oh, I'll do it if he doesn't. Okay, cool. Alright, go, go. We're going to do surnames. So, um, so, 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 something yeah. and... Yeah. What's your yeah. surname? Yeah. Born. Born. Something and born. Something and born. Alright. Hey, I'm Seb. I was treasurer of the program this year and I've also been vice president for the past for two years, so that's a little bit of experience background. Um, currently this year I've been working full time and I've found it's been a really big challenge. That's one of the main reasons I didn't want to go for any like president, vice president or anything. One, because I think I can form the role of helping someone that's in that role, it's an experience. Um, but I don't want to be in a position where people come you know, to me and expect them a lot. Um, and <laughs> I mean, I can, I mean, I can still, I can still um, perform. Like I can still work as secretary. But I think those roles, vice president and president, is like really important in terms of trying to get everyone to like follow along and like, lead. Yes. So that's yeah. Um, in terms of. Um, the secretary role. Um, basically, I I think I can organize things pretty well. I, I do like doing minutes, even though I didn't realize it was a secretary or anything. Um, and what I'm intending to do next year, especially for space society as well, is look into how to best make working with fate and activate and organize your head up into different forms as streamlined as a process, like as streamlined as possible. Because if one, if I don't have enough time, I want to try and make it as easy as possible to do all this stuff, and that's kind of a goal. Again, if I don't get this goal, I'm still going to be doing that, and I'm still going to be able to help us and do that. But yeah, that's the question. Lower to you. Are you considered to be a treasurer again? Yeah. Yes. Okay. You, what was hard about it? Why were you doing it? I just, I didn't enjoy it. So I like helping out with events. I help, help organize stuff, but 
they like the responsibility mm -hmm. just having to not bring the self responsibility yeah. with it, it's just that I don't I know. know. I just, I just find it's not a lot of that doesn't okay. I just Alright, so we're gonna just have cruise. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'll just give you a quick background. I haven't been in the society before, it's my first year here. Uh, I've done work with me before, so I was in the first year when I was done a few years ago, and I'm in my third year now. Second year, I didn't do any exact stuff, so this year I started my video and I was doing technology support for them. So I think my title is Technology Manager. But they made it into an exact position, so I actually have responsibilities. Um, so they made me do all the service stuff, things like that. So sort of. yeah, but um, I've had to do more stuff now because the VP went overseas. So hopefully, we don't make that mistake. Uh, and uh, I've sort of picked up a lot of the social sort of and then um, events responsibility I guess you'd say the events manager is, is better at the, the VP stuff so I've stepped into that role as well and um, so I've got a good relationship with them a good relationship with their sponsors and I don't think there's any rules against punching sponsors so I don't see I just want to talk to someone yeah. 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 so people like WiseTech which is good because we're already talked to them Juniper Park they do like networking stuff like that and then Microsoft I think no one here will have experience with treasurer roles, right? Yeah. Oh, but you're not running, so. We can be the update now. I'm kind of nervous on next year, so. Just be the treasurer for every year. You are the arbitrator of just all society. Yeah. Just have to be all the time. Just among all the fair societies. That'll work, right? Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I promise you, I'm suffering. So I'm employed full time currently and I will be finishing the year April roughly and I'll be doing the full time for a year. So um, I'm employed full time until January and I'm attending a community part time but I'm doing a full time year and helping out with the past. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's all you need. Uh, Technically, he's doing 
everyone will be subject next semester. So, right. Are there forms already that they can search for treasures and all this stuff? It's all written in the class. Oh, there's a guy. Yeah. Yeah, but the girls are. Yeah, Sam will do a hand over. He got Excel, it'll be alright. Yeah. Why do either of you want to be treasurer? Especially given that we were bundling you two into CSO, were we not? Huh? Yeah. Would you prefer treasurer to CSO? But either of them could be in the second CSO, right? You both have hardware, server, whatever. Right, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So can I take two out of the five rolls, please? <laughs> <laughs> so those are the rolls on the table. Do you both prefer to be treasurer than CSO? No. What would you rather? What would you rather? Be CSO. What would you rather? I mean, different. What would you rather? Suck in, now you're treasurer. <laughs> Everyone who doesn't want to be treasurer, take one step. <laughs> I was so worried about the experience. I feel like I probably would say CSO, but I'm happy to do that. Okay. Three CSOs it is. Three treasures. We need a treasure. It's very funny how reluctant all of the execs have been to take that role to tough one. Treasure is not that bad. If you don't accept it, that makes you yeah. treasure. Well, yeah. technically no. Which he wants slightly more. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't accept the nomination. Anyway. All right, cool. Process. I think that's just him leaving. <laughs> 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 and that's the last one we ever saw. Um, signature. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so who's going? Yes. Taking a photo. Glory up, Steve. Anyone? Uh, it's all yes. No, yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> how many? How many people are in the room actually? It's like. Yeah, you have two as well. Sorry. Right? Yeah. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We had fifteen. Like, so. Fifteen. So it's exactly how many like fourteen? Fourteen. fourteen. If we had almost two. Fourteen. Okay, so we've got the yeah. count. Mm -hmm. right. drum. No. Yes. Okay. okay, and the winner is... Hey. 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 Alright, so now we get to CSO. So what we've decided to do, and um, you've given it a name, right? PFY. PFY. So I think there's some history behind this name, but um, the CSO has often had an assistant of some sort, which has given the name PFY. What was the reference to again? It's like the bar stop right from, from hell. hell. Yeah. Had an assistant called the Pimply Face Youth. Okay. Right. Yeah, some reference. So yeah, we have history for this. Yeah. So whoever is not successful as the CSO, they can go as the PFY. Yeah. And even you know, officially, according to our constitution, it will be a liaison role, but we'll put down a motion to include it as an exec role for this year. Can you include it just, just as co CSO? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. CSO yeah. has no limitation to the, like, like, when you have these roles, yeah. they don't specify a single person has to um, be no. it, right? Uh, I think they made constitutional amendments. So why don't we have yeah. seven yeah. presidents? Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 Is that in our constitution? Yeah. Yeah. And you can have presidents in the past. Some, it's it's not a mandatory thing in the constitution, but some constitutions have it. Some don't. Is it in your constitution? We can definitely tell active readers to not tell readers to think we're free. I can't wait to tell them. Yeah. So it's cozy as official. That would look hilarious on someone's test day. In full, pimply face youth. Yeah. Bachelor of Science in Computing Science with honours, pimply face youth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so the two from the vice chancellor. Yep. <laughs> well, well, okay. They'll be like, I don't care about your GPA. Why are you a pimply face youth? It's got smells of Oh yeah. Employers <laughs> keep telling me my, my skin's cleared up from mine. <laughs> 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 
you know how to shut Vim and all that important stuff. Yeah. Yes, know how to shut Vim. Uh, my... no, look, how do you shut Vim? Huh? How, how? Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, shut it oh. Colon WQ, however, I like to do it just with the exclamation mark Q because I don't care about saving anything, it's fine. I'll just fast and loose on my What about shift Z? Nano is better anyway, who cares? I just shovel a shit I just said I'll shut down now. It's tough to deal with each of it. Realistically, when it comes to technical expertise, uh, that was a big part of my whole job when I was working. I basically set up a bunch of servers uh, for like video capture and stuff. So I was working with like analog data and transferring into things. And I had to set up like Linux servers, and we had a uh, remote server that we had to SSH into. This whole thing. One time, I went to Melbourne to set up uh, some stuff in the Channel Seven server room, which was kind of cool. Uh, Wow. Yeah, so I've I've done stuff when it comes to lugging big boxes around and typing keyboards. <coughs> and, um, all right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So um, a lot of the stuff I do at work is um, AWS related. So I've got a lot of experience with AWS, Kubernetes, cloud stuff. I have my own server that's just a VPS that I run through there. So that's where I learned a lot of my new stuff from. Um, also in IT, you do a subject called Web Systems, which is like super basic Linux. Um, but if you keep going from there, then you can eventually learn a lot more. And sadly, at UTS, there isn't actually any undergraduate Unix systems courses. There's only postgraduate ones. So if you want to learn that sort of stuff, you've got to learn it yourself. So um, I've sort of taken the initiative and learned a lot of that stuff myself. I installed my Crouton and stuff like that. I had a Chromebook. It was the first computer I had when I got to uni was a Chromebook because I couldn't afford anything else. And I put Linux on there and said Chrome OS, and it was just the greatest thing ever. Um, and then I met a super nerdy friend and installed uh, Arch Linux, oh. and then I wanted to kill myself. I still like Linux, I still feel like Linux. Yeah. Um, uh, you, should, you should try running the CentOS stuff sometime. That kills me. Yeah, um, that's a good story, actually, because our work VM that we have at NAT is a CentOS VM, one that they use on the Windows machines, and it's terrible. It's oh, the nah, it's, it's, it's the best. It doesn't even have apps. I don't know what I love it. It's, yeah. it's, it's package manager's the worst. Yeah, yeah. Um, it makes it worse when you're behind a work proxy that you can't install anything like Yarn or anything yeah. like that. So. Uh, to follow on with what you said about uh, you know, people don't really know how to use Ubuntu or Linux programs. It actually would be a really good initiative for us to, as, as a workshop, to teach people how to use the basic stuff like Git, how to use the work, like the workflow processes. Because I've been doing an embedded software subject this semester, which has a lot of electrical engineering students in it who are interested in programming, but they suck. <laughs> they they just they just can't use Git to save their life. And having some workshops just to give the basics of because I think like a lot of subjects expect you know it in some form. And it's not the most intuitive program, so having a way to properly teach it would actually be something that we as a role would, would do. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's interesting you mentioned that because I think one of the things like when Proxmark was founded is one of the things they did was they released a publication of some sort, and the publication is about using Unix. Because you know back then they had like, like a one or two computers yeah. that had all of UTS. Yeah. It's it's not like the prettiest yeah. workshop. It's not it's not it's not the most uh, hey let's use a three D printer or have virtual reality or whatever. But it's core fundamentals that I think uni is sorely lacking in. So which that's kind of the purpose of societies to give access to stuff like that. Yeah, but as you say, way back in the midst of time, the the faculty was all summers and they didn't teach any of it. If they outsourced all the faculty outsourced all responsibility for Unix training to the programming society. And this meant that they gave us resources and stuff and we had real responsibilities and empowered the society for years until they finally got Linux here and took some responsibility for teaching it. <laughs> and now it looks like it's swung the other way and they're not doing any of that anymore. Yeah, I can verify that it's just gone completely so, They've actually, yeah, actually this year they've removed a subject called Web Services Development, which was the next one from Web Systems, and it actually taught you how to use the command line. That's gone now. Yeah. So it's a good, it's a good space for this. It was a good space for the society yeah. because you know membership and purchase of this manual was recommended by the faculty, yeah. which did fund this membership. So if you wanted to get back into that space. And I think a lot of us have connections with the staff and like the you know, faculty and stuff that would help us 
push that forward. So having you know some actual communications within the subject. So when we're doing workshops, a big thing we do that uh, I want to try and push a bit more in the future is don't just say, hey, we're having a workshop. Try and tie it to a subject or to a group of subjects. So when we're doing stuff like learn Git, all the subjects that just assume we should have it, we should probably be promoting them through those subjects. Yeah. Uh, that's some stuff that we should be doing and you know, having those contacts with the uh, computer science society, uh, not society, sorry, computer science faculty through like Luke Matheson and other people like that and through uh, like Pete McLaren who does like all the embedded software stuff, all those people would be good to pass that knowledge on to because they seem very keen from my conversations with them about like having some more resources to learn that stuff outside of the subjects. Absolutely. Yeah. Anyone met Ryan Heist that we've got? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. He knows like all the kinds of him, and you watch him, and he's like typing as if it's Microsoft Word. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's actually made like, his own custom version. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not yeah. just yeah. regular game. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, his his it's batch RC uh, file that has all his configuration which is something like 780 lines. <laughs> so you can imagine the amount of stuff he's got in there. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the John Skater videos. <laughs> yes. All right, so I guess we're going to have to vote. So anyone have any questions or something before we send them outside? Yeah, I talk to them. <laughs> right, I'll send you outside. <laughs> Involve C, do a better software. He's not really the hardest thing to do, but it's really the main thing. The problem with embedded software is there's a prerequisite. You have to do fundamentals of C programming first. I was going to say you could. Because, because IT does object-oriented C yeah. subjects, you could probably make a request saying, I've done this subject that's basically C fundamentals. Yeah. Yeah. And now the verdict. Well, the good thing is, is we're basically going to have the same role anyway, yes, so it doesn't really matter. So, yeah, and yeah, not being quiet. The step is co CSO. So, we put that in the minutes. We'll have a motion to add a co CSO role for the 2018. Yeah. So, yeah. do we need anything else to put in there, or what do you guys have for our aims? Uh, for we just like a um, motion to add this for against. Oh, so we'll have to do a vote probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So let's have a vote for CSO. Who wants the co CSO position? Yeah, sure. Oh, wait, no, wait, wait, wait. wait. There's there's like motion to add it to the. All right. Motion to add it as a role, and then you can motion to. Like, oh, just for the year, right? That's for the year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so we'll have a motion to add the co CSO role as an executive position for 2018. 19. 19. 19. 19. Yes, 19. All right, so hands up for yes. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it lucky we kept that tiebreaker thing in? Yeah. Yeah. Because she does a lot. The handy piece. Yeah. Cool. So that's the next one. We only have a small well, amount of stuff left. Putting some exciting stuff. Let's go. The exciting thing is next year is actually going to be an even number. Sorry? Oh. Did we vote in as we said before? Yeah, that was to say that for all the things. Yeah. Alright, so now we have another moment there. Does anyone else want to run for OCSO? Oh, it's not me. I want both roles. Merge them back into one. Alright, so someone know now to run for OCSO. Yeah, so that's the same thing as that. Alright, so someone can close their eyes. Close your eyes. Just like, come on, just close your eyes. Hands up for yes. Yes. Well, general knowledge of business. Now the exciting thing is, next year is actually Crossbox's 30th birthday. Wow. How exciting is this? <laughs> so we're thinking, like, we made a pretty grand profit this year. We should probably have some pretty exciting kind of celebration of some sort, and use that money to at least subsidise that celebration. Yeah. I don't know what it'll look like. Probably not a formal ball, but we want something at like the aerial or something, you know? Yeah. Some kind of thing. Get some on the road, get some stuff, get yeah. accurate yeah. in there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we think that'd be pretty Break into building 10. Yeah. Is that room still there? No. No. <laughs> So yeah, does anyone else have any general business or anything else they want to discuss? Yeah. 
I didn't think it would pass, to be honest. Yeah. Wow. Just because a lot of the, uh, I know a lot of the old timers and stuff are really like, they don't want to change that. It was originally 20, and then we changed it to 14 last time. <laughs> yeah, but if you, if you, if that's when you're struggling to yeah. obtain, like, mm -hmm. well, you should change so it. How, what was the membership count this year like? 156. Yeah. How come we can't get 14 out of 156? Yeah, it's like less than 10%. Yeah, like clubs have that problem. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. Rates are like any gauges below like 5%. Mm -hmm. yeah. most clubs, so. It's this lack of interest too at the end of like the yeah. last semester that everyone just pushed. Yeah. Yeah. I'm out of it. What's, what's phase of the semester? This is like exam period, just about. Yeah. yeah. This is yeah. the week before exams. Yeah. We have no classes before exams. We're meant to be studying. How about next year we combine it with something? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 it's it's robot around. battle and Asian. Close me. <laughs> yeah, I guess we close me. Yeah. So record oh, the time. Hacking to activate yeah. service. Yeah. 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 So it took so long, everyone. Love it. It's a natural problem. Congratulations. Hi. No, actually, I, I don't know. I feel dog if I leave. No one else is leaving. What's that? Yeah, what's this yeah, phone? What's this phone? Who's taking a 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 ph